and then sharing my screen. All right, so 7.5, analyzing graphs. of quadratic functions. Okay, so what we're looking at today is the vertex of a parabola. And y'all, basically, it is the minimum or maximum point of a parabola. I'll say um so a minimum would be that bottom point on your parabola or like we said it could be a maximum point of a parabola now we'll have a formula to find these in a little bit but there's other things that happens on these parabolas so y'all say I got me a graph here And I'm just going to make it about five to make it small. So say I got me a parabola that sort of Touching my x-axis about right there. So this is the vertex. But there's another thing nice about the vertex. Um, of a parabola. If I drew a imaginary vertical line right here it would split that parabola in half. So this line, we call it the axis of symmetry. Sort of like when we had stuff uh, that was symmetric to the y-axis. Well, these are sort of symmetric to this axis of symmetry. If I fold my parabola over that axis of symmetry, it'll cut it straight in half. So the axis of symmetry the axis of symmetry is equal to the x value of the vertex and comes into form of x equals a. That means when you write the axis of symmetry, since it's an imaginary vertical line, it's going to be the x coordinate of the vertex equal to whatever that number is. So look here, mine is sitting at 2 right here. So for this parabola I just drew, the axis of symmetry would be x equals 2. That would be the equation for the line that's cutting it in half, okay? Now, if you notice another thing about these points, these points give me either a minimum y value for the function or a maximum if it's turned over. So the min, minimum, or maximum value. Well, guess what? The minimum or maximum value is equal to the y value of the vertex. OK. 
Okay. Now, there's two ways to tell if I got a minimum or maximum value, and it's by looking at the x squared term of the function. So if that x squared term is positive, so 2x squared, 3x squared, if it's a positive number on that x squared, then that means you're going to have a minimum value. Okay, so we'll have a minimum value, which means if the x squared term is negative, well, y'all remember, if I put a negative in front of my function, it takes that graph and it reflects it over the x-axis. So if I'm reflecting that graph over, it will then have a maximum value. So if I got a negative 5x squared, that negative 5 being negative, flips the parabola over, and you got a maximum on it, okay? Now, the first problem they give you, um, they're going to give us the graph, and it says use the graph of the quadratic formula, uh, function. So use the graph of quadratic function. And then they say f of x equals, uh, what do they got? A times x minus h squared plus k. Don't worry about this. This is just the pattern that um, you can come up with to find the equation of these uh, functions. But that don't mean nothing to us. What we want to do, we want to find the vertex. But this part usually confuses people. So I just want y'all to know that don't mean nothing. That just means we got a graph of some kind of squared function here, okay? So we're going to find the vertex axis of symmetry. And the min or max value. And I'll actually tell you whether it is a min or max. Well, you can tell by the graph. So let's see. They got us a graph here. And y'all, on this graph, looks like they're going out about uh, five or so. All right, so let me see. Uh, let me let one in. Also, sir. Yeah. Um, Sophie's computer isn't working right now, so she's sitting here with me. Hi, Mr. Rathlon. Oh, uh, Sophie Davis. Okay. Yes, I think yeah. something's wrong with Flasky Tech's account or a uh, website or something. Well, it... what it is is the portal's messing up. So oh. you can't act so you can't access Blackboard through the portal. But we, oh. if you go to the UAPTC main homepage mm -hmm. and you click the student tab right there. Yes, sir. Without logging into the portal, just click that student tab and then go down and you'll see where it says Blackboard access. I think it'll let y'all in that way. Okay. But Do apparently we've had, uh, we've had portal issues all day. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I've been getting emails from people <laughs> about the homework and stuff. So, mm -hmm. okay, so did you? I, I hope you have. I'm on my phone because I was having the same problem. This Latasha Epperson, do you have me signed in? Yeah, I got in? you. Yeah, I got you. All right, same, with, you. same, same with me, Tam Tamra Nation. Yeah, I got all y'all. If I'm okay. y'all in, I know who y'all are, and I've got uh, Latasha. I've actually got iPhone by your name, so. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Okay. You know when I got that sort of comes in like that. So 
Yeah. Okay. Now, they're going to give you a picture like this. It's going to have a parabola drawn, and it's going to give you this point right here. Okay? So, the vertex. Well, looking at the graph, the vertex is this point. And you got to write it as an ordered pair. The vertex would be the point 3, negative 2. Okay? So, this one actually gives it to you. Then they say, hey, well, what about the axis of symmetry? Now, remember, the axis of symmetry, you got to put X equals, well, y'all look, that axis of symmetry would be an imaginary vertical line cutting that parabola in half, which means it's going to be X equal to this X value of that vertex, which would be, Three. Okay, so axis of symmetry is always equal to that first number there, okay? And then it says, well, what's the min or maximum value? Now, when we look at value of a function, we're looking at the y values. So the min or max value would be equal to the y value of that vertex which would be our negative two. So this first problem is just getting you used to the vertex, axis of symmetry, and then that Y value being that minimum value. So notice the lowest this graph goes is that negative two on the Y values, okay? Now, to work the rest of these, they're not going to give us the graph. We're going to find the vertex using a formula. So, y'all, here we go with our vertex formula. Now, remember, the vertex has to be an ordered pair. So, to get that x value, we're going to use the formula negative b over 2a. Sort of like the first part of your uh, quadratic formula. Y'all had that negative B in it, and then that 2A on the bottom. That gives me the X value. Now, to get the Y value, I find F of whatever negative B over 2A equals. So, if I plug in my numbers for, for the negative B over 2A and I get a 5, that means this would be F of 5, and to find that, I would put five back into the function and see what value I get, okay? So we find our X value, then we're going to plug it into the actual function to get our Y values. Now remember, it's just like the quad. When you start this, you want everything on one side. Okay, you want everything in descending order, and then A is in front of X squared. B will be in front of the X, and then your C. Just like the quad formula when you found those numbers, okay? Now, uh, I will say when we, these will have you graph them when you're done finding the vertex and stuff. When you graph them, the first point in this section that we have to plot is the vertex point itself, okay? And I'll show you that when I hit this first one here. So let, me act, so let me say this. If negative B over 2A is how I find the X coordinate, that means that the line of symmetry is going to be X equals whatever negative B over 2A gives me. Then we said the min or, uh, max value was equal to the Y value. So it's going to be equal to whatever the function value is when I find those X's, okay? So y'all on this one, we're going to find the vertex, we're going to find the axis of symmetry, we're going to determine if a min or max value
um, and find that value. And then guess what? Then we're going to graph. Now this function they're giving me, f of x equals x squared minus 8x plus 7. Now, if you remembered what I said about the minimum and maximum values while ago when I was giving y'all the list, on this function, this is a positive x squared here. So when I had a positive x squared, y'all, did I say we would get a minimum or maximum value? Was it minimum? It's minimum. Because remember, that's like a positive one. And when you graph that thing, it will definitely be a minimum. So let's find that vertex. So I'm going to find my vertex first. So for the vertex, I need to get my x value. So here I'm going to get the x value first by doing negative b over 2a. Well, y'all, where's my here's my function. So let's figure out what is a, b, and c. Well, a would be that positive one that we don't see. B would be the negative 8, and C would be the positive 7. Now, I will say, you're not using the C in this part, um, but it's all, all here when you plug in to get the Y value. So remember, the negative is here always. So put your negative first, and then you're putting in a negative 8. And remember, I'm always putting my negative numbers in parentheses. And then on the bottom would be 2 times A, which was 1. So see, that negative's only purpose in life again was to change this from a negative 8 into a positive 8. 2 times 1 is 2 on the bottom. And then 8 divided by 2 gives me a 4. So I know the X value of my vertex will be 4 now. Which means, guess what? My axis of symmetry will be x equals that 4, okay? So let's finish the vertex now by getting our y value. So it says right here, your y value is going to be f of what you got from the negative b over 2a. So we're going to find f of 4. So f of 4, I'm going to take this little function and put a 4 in for both of my x's, okay? So I'm going to have 4 squared minus 8 times 4 plus 7. Once I solve this, I then get my y value, which will be my min or max value, okay? So y'all, here we go. 4 squared is 16 minus 8 times 4 is 32 plus seven and y'all watch you'll see a pattern on this vertex stuff on at this point this second number is always twice as big as the first number and it's always opposite in sign <clears throat> so if i had a 10 here this would be a negative 20 or if i had say a negative five in the front this would be a positive 10 so the second number in at this point is always twice as big and that makes this nice because 16 minus 32 gives you a negative 16 plus 7. So let's see, negative 16 plus 7, that's going to give us a negative 9 for our y value. So the first answer, you got to put your ordered pair with parentheses 4 comma negative 9 for your vertex. Then it said, Axis of symmetry. All right, well, we know we got what we need for the axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry is going to be x equals that x value, which was 4.
Um, then it says, determine if it has a minimum or maximum value. Well, we said while go, since this A was positive, we was going to have a minimum. So we're going to have a minimum. And you actually got to pick the one that says minimum. And the minimum value is equal to the Y value of a negative nine. So there will be a choice where you got to choose either maximum or minimum and then put in that negative nine. And then y'all comes the part about graphing. Um, now, to get points on this, I got one point here on in Math Lab. We got to use the three-point quadratic tool. Okay, now the first point must be the vertex. If you don't plot that vertex point first, it will not give you the correct graph. So y'all let me number out about 10 on this. All righty, so if you're making you a table here to graph in math lab, that four negative nine has to be the first point. That's your vertex. Now, you can get me two other points any way you want to. You can find the, uh, you can use a quadratic formula, get the x-intercepts. Um, that's one way you could do it. Now, what I do, since we got a calculator here, I'm going to use the calculator to get my other two points. So y'all let me share the screen and show you how I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go to Y equals, and I'm going to put that in. I had uh, X squared, so X, and then square that, minus 8, x plus 7. So we'll see the graph. Remember, we said it had a minimum. So when we're done, it got to look like that right there, okay? So I'm going to hit the second blue button and then graph to go to the table. Now, look here. The last point we can see on here is my 4, negative 9. So if I was doing three points, I would probably pick a point on each side. There's a three negative eight and then a five negative eight. Well, we knew they would be the same on either side of that four because remember, these things are symmetric. And if you keep going down, you say I got a negative five with the two, I'm gonna have a negative five with the six. So that's showing me that that negative nine is in fact my minimum value. So y'all, what I do, in math lab, you got to pl plot four negative nine first. So you're going to come over here, four and down nine. And then it don't matter what order you plot the rest of these points. So I can go over to my three negative eight right here. Then I can go do my five negative eight. When I do that point right there, that's when math lab is going to come in and draw y'all's parabola for you, okay? Y'all, but the very thing you got to remember, that vertex has to be first. If I plot this first at 3, negative 8, if I'd have plotted this one first, it would have made my parabola have that as its minimum, and it would have flipped it over because of that point. So be careful, okay?
All righty, so y'all, that's using the vertex formula. So that's what we're going to be playing with today. So let's do another one. How about same instructions? We're going to find the vertex, axis of symmetry, max or min, and the value, then graph it. So I got f of x equals 2x squared plus 14x plus 24. So I'm going to figure out a, b, and c. So y'all, a is 2. B is 14. And C is 24. So let's get the vertex first. And I'm going to go after the X value. Now remember, X value is negative B over 2A. So y'all, let's plug it in. We got our negative we're going to bring down. This time B is 14, so I'm just going to bring it down. So it was positive here, now it's negative. And then on the bottom, I got 2 times my A, which is 2. Oh, y'all, look at that. I got a negative 14 over 4. That don't divide, but we got to reduce it. And both of these will divide by 2. So I got to reduce that down since they both divide by 2 and make that a negative 7 halves. So remember, at this point, I just divided out those twos, okay? So here's my vertex. And my first point for my x is a negative 7 halves. So you know that's about to make this uh, y value fun, right? Because of that fraction. So y'all, the y value is going to be f of negative 7 halves. Which means where they got an X, I'm going to put in my negative seven halves, okay? Now, I will say, um, at this point, once you put all this stuff in, you can use your calculator to figure this out. Um, I'm actually going to do it by hand. And that's that. And then I had, what, a plus 24. I'm going to work it by hand, um, but really, you could, at this point, plug that in the calculator, and it'll spit the answer out quick, okay? Um, just remember, if you get a decimal, turn it back into a fraction for MATLAB. They want this in fraction form and not decimal form. All right, exponents got priority, so I'm going to bring down that 2. When you square a fraction, you square the top and you square the bottom. So negative 7 times negative 7 is a positive 49. And then on bottom, 2 times 2 is 4. Now, I'm not doing nothing else that step. I'm just bringing everything else down. So exponent first. Now I'm going to multiply. Now, when you multiply fractions, treat these numbers like they got a one on bottom. And when you multiply fractions, we go straight across. Okay? So, 2 times 49 gives you 98 over 1 times 4, which is 4. Here, you got a positive times a negative. That's going to be negative. 14 times 7, that's what, uh, ooh, that's 98. Over 1 times 2, which is 2. And then, y'all, at the end, I got my 24. Now, I'm going to add and subtract. So, I want the 24 to look like a fraction. So, I'm just going to put a 1 under here. And in order for me to have a way to add these fractions, we're going to have to find a least common denominator of of a four, of a two, and a one. So the smallest number that a four goes into, a two goes into, and a one goes into would be the four, right? 
four goes into itself once. Two will go into four twice. So I can turn a four in uh I can turn a two into a four, and I can turn this one into a four. So we're not changing that fraction. It's already got a four down there. Now, if I turn the bottom into a four here, I got to do the same thing to the top. So I'm going to multiply the bottom by two. So two times two gives you a four on the bottom. Two times 98 is 196. So whatever you multiply the bottom by, we got to do the top, okay? And then here, I had a one on bottom. I got to multiply that by four to turn that into a four. And then I got 24 times four, which would be 96. Now, we got a common denominator. So at this point, there's going to be a four on the bottom. What we got to do is figure out what's going on top. So 98 minus 196 is a negative 98. Because once again, that thing's twice as big as this one and opposite in sign. So negative 98 plus 96 is a negative 2. And y'all, that negative 2 over 4 will reduce. Both of them will divide by 2. So you're going to divide both of them by 2. And you get a negative 1 half. So that is now our y value. All right, so that was the vertex, the axis of symmetry. Well, if that's my axis of vert, uh, my vertex, I mean, axis of symmetry is the x value. So you got to put x equals negative 7 halves. Um, so on this one, do I have a minimum or maximum value with that being a positive two? Now remember, we said if this A is positive, you got a minimum. So this one has a minimum value of, well, y'all, the minimum value is the y value, which is a negative one half. All right, then they want us to graph it. Now, since this one has a lot of uh, fractions in it, you'll notice math lab will be broke down into fractions on this thing. It'll have like a half, one, half, two, half, three, half, four, half, five. And then the same thing, half, negative one, half, negative two, half, negative three, half, negative four, half, negative five. It's going to put all these half marks in there because of these fractions. So same thing here, half one, half two, half three, half four, half five, and then left. Three, half four, half negative five. Now, the first point I'm going to plot is still going to be that negative seven halves, negative one half, and... I'm probably using my calculator for this one. I'm going to punch it in and get my other two Y values because um, I'm going to try to find other points that ain't so fractiony. So y'all math lab, choose the three-point quadratic tool in your X and Y table. The first point we plot is negative seven halves, negative one half. Now, if you need help, you can turn those into fractions. I mean, into decimals. Negative seven half would give you negative three halves. So you can go left to a negative three halves. Negative one, negative two, negative three halves. 
and then negative one half will be down one. So my vertex is over here in between negative three and negative four at negative three halves, and then I went down negative one. Now y'all to get my other two points, I'm going to go to my calculator. So I'm going to go to Y equals and clear that out. So this one was a 2X squared. Plus 14X. Plus 24. Whoops, too many. Uh, let me go back and delete that one. So plus 24. So let's look at the graph. Remember, I was on the left side here. That little vertex is over here at negative three and a half and negative one half. But y'all, what we want is some nice points to plot. Now I'm going to arrow up because remember, my vertex was on the negative side. My vertex was in between negative three and negative four. I was at negative uh, seven halves, which was negative 3.5. So y'all look at that. I got two points I can plot that are really easy. Negative four, zero, and negative three, zero. So plot that vertex, plot in two points. So negative four, zero will be over here at negative four, zero. Negative three, zero, come over to negative three. At that point, Math Lab's gonna draw our graph. Okay, so whew, that's the trick is getting that vertex and then going after two more points, okay? All right, y'all, so let me try another one of these and then I'll sort of change it up a little bit. So once again, the vertex, axis of symmetry, min or max, and um, we'll graph it. So this is a negative x squared minus 10x minus 27. All right, so let's get A, B, and C. <laughs> now notice, this time A is a negative one. B is a negative 10, and C is a negative 27. So let's start out by getting our X value of that vertex. And uh, pray for no fractions. So we're going to find negative B over 2A. So that'll be negative. I'm putting in a negative 10 this time in parentheses. On bottom, I got two times that negative one. So y'all on top, negative times negative makes that a positive 10. On bottom, two times negative one is negative two. And then 10 divided by negative two gives me a negative five. So I now know the X value of the vertex. I also know the axis of symmetry. The y value, I'm going to find f of negative 5. So now be careful. That negative is in front, remember. So put that negative down. Then put in your negative 5 and square that. Then you're subtracting 10 times your negative 5. And then you got minus 27. Now, y'all, the biggest mistake I get here is people see this negative times that negative and make that a positive. But remember, multiplying don't have priority over that exponent. So you bring that negative down. So this negative is automatically coming down. And then negative 5 times negative 5 gives you a 25. So you don't only have two negatives here. Because you're squaring the negative five, it's like you got three negatives. A negative, negative five, negative five. 
Well, three negatives, make that a negative, okay? Now, negative 10 times negative 5 makes that a positive 50, and then minus my 27. And y'all look at that. At this point, this was negative 25. Double to 25 and change the sign, and there you go. Sort of makes this adding part right, right here easy, because negative 25 and 50 is 25. 25 minus 27 is a negative 2. So the y value, which is also the min or max, is going to be negative 2. All right, y'all, I'm coming in with my axis of symmetry. Well, that's going to be x equals the x value, which was a negative 5. Now, let me ask y'all this. On this problem, do I got a minimum or maximum value? Is it maximum? It's maximum because that's negative this time. Remember, that parabola done flipped over. So we got a maximum value of, oh, where's my y value? That was what, negative two? So you'll put that in there. Um, and then we got to graph it again. Um, I won't graph this one, but remember, in math lab, graph the vertex first and then find two more points. And I'd usually, I'm just, I would say, I would just plug that into my y equals. And y'all, it'll spit out that table really quick on that, okay? So let me ask y'all if this is true or false. I'm going to do one of these. They're going to hit you with like three of them, I think. But see if this is true or false. The function... I'll probably do two of these. The function f of x equals 4x squared minus 3x minus 8 has a maximum value. Is that true or false? This function, 4x squared minus 3x minus 8, does it have a maximum value? Is that true? Well, y'all remember, you're looking false. at this. That's oh, false. What I just hear? It's false. It's false because that 4 is positive. It's positive. And we said if it was positive, it had a minimum value. So good job. That is definitely false. So one more of those. Let's see if y'all remember from the other day. Um, so this is another true or false. The graph. Um, H of X equals X plus three squared can be obtained by translating the graph H of X equals X squared left three units. So this goes back to them translations I did the other day. The vertical stuff and the horizontal stuff. So let's see. If I add three to my X inside parentheses, is that plus three moving me left or is it going to move me right? They're saying left. So is this true or false? Well, y'all check this out. We said when you attack those X's, this is going to be a horizontal shift. And we said if we added three to the X before we squared it, it would actually move it left. Remember the this um, horizontal shift left and right is opposite what you think. 
you would think adding three would move you right, but remember, it actually moves me left three units. What well, they said, left three units. So this one would be true. Okay. All righty. So new, I'm going to give you some new terminology, and then we can finish out the rest of this. All right, trying to keep my pages together. All righty. So next, we're going to learn about what we call intervals of increasing and decreasing. Now, when we do the support, it'll actually have practice on doing these intervals. And they do increase and decrease in and constant. But remember, parabolas, if you read this parabola, you got to read from left to right on a parabola. This parabola right here would be decreasing on the left side and increasing on the right side. So it's decreasing on the left side and it's increasing on the right side. Now, what if the parabola is turned upside down? If the parabola is turned upside down, then this side is increasing. And this side would be decreasing. So increasing goes uphill left to right. The decreasing will go downhill left to right. Now, when I talk about an interval of increasing, the interval of increasing is the x values where the graph goes uphill, left to right, okay, from left to right, uphill, so this one right here, like I said, the first part, and then the second one on the uh, other one, okay, now, in a, now notice, I said it's only the x values, I don't care about these y values, I want to know what X value it starts increasing on and then what X value does it stop increasing on, okay? So how about an interval of decreasing? Well, that's going to be the same thing, but we're going to put downhill. So it's the X values. where the graph goes downhill left to right. Now, the point where these are going from increasing to decreasing, that X value is going to be the ending of the increasing and then it's going to be the beginning of the decrease in whatever X value is on that vertex, y'all. Because that vertex is the line where it does the uh, symmetry, okay? So let's play with one of these. So once again, that vertex is going to be important for us. So these examples. And then we'll work with these. Uh, there's like three problems in... Uh, Support doing this, so I'll show you how to do those. So for this one, we're going to find the vertex. Determine min or max in value. All 
Oh, here's a new one. We're going to find a range. Remember, the range is the y values. Uh, find intervals of increasing and decreasing. Oh, and what's nice? I don't have to graph these. So these will be like your, uh, I think it's like eight and nine in that area. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to do f of x equals Uh, I'm going to do the one with the fraction, okay? So I got negative 4x squared minus 20x plus 9. So I, I, there's two of these, and I'm, I wanted to do the harder of the two. So A is negative 4, B is negative 20, C is 9. And y'all really, once I got my vertex, I can pretty much answer all these questions right here. Okay. And I'll actually draw a picture over here. Um, just my graph with my vertex. I'm not going to get all detailed or nothing on it. Okay. I just sort of like to draw me a picture to keep up with what they're giving me. So let's get our vertex and go after that X value. So the x value, negative b over 2a, will be negative times negative 20 over 2 times negative 4. So y'all look here, I got three negatives again. So when we're done, this better be a negative answer. And I'm getting a positive 20 on top, negative 8 on the bottom. <clears throat> Now, I know that's going to be negative. All I can do is simplify this. These divide by 2, but they'll also divide by a bigger number. These will also divide by 4. So 4 is the biggest number they both divide by. So 20 divided by 4 makes that a negative 5 over 8 divided by 4 is 2. So on this one, I divided both them by 4 to simplify it which means the x value of my vertex is negative 5 halves. So let's get the y value. That's going to be f of negative 5 halves. So it's going to be negative 4 times negative 5 halves squared, negative 20 times negative 5 halves, plus nine. All right, y'all, so once again, bring down that negative four because you got to do the exponent first. So negative five times negative five is a 25. Two times two is a four. Then I'm bringing everything else down. Now, I ain't going to lie. Sometimes y'all can do more steps that I'm doing in, in each line. I just do this so that people see what I'm actually doing here. Now, show you a trick. This four will divide by that four. Because remember, I can simplify before I multiply fractions. So these fours will cancel, making that a negative one. And negative one times 25 is a negative 25. Or you could have did negative 4 times 25, which is a negative 100, divided by 4, which will give you that negative 25. Here, that's a negative times a negative, so we know that's going to be positive no matter what. And this 20 and 2 will reduce. 20 divided by 2 will make that a 10. And y'all, 10 times 5 is 50. 
So once again, negative 25, twice as big, opposite inside, and then at the end is my nine. Here, let's see, negative 25 and 50 give you 25 plus nine, which is 34. So I know my vertex, I'm just going to act like I'm going um, negative x's will be on this side. So that'll be what? Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. You're going to be about in the middle. Negative 5 halves is like a negative 2.5. And then 34, whoo, 34 is way up here. Now. My question is, is this point a minimum or a maximum? So let me find A, y'all. Oh, A is way over here. A was negative four. So min or max? I'd say max because mm -hmm. it's negative. Uh-huh. So we know this parameter is coming down something like that. Okay. All right, now, remember, the x value of this is negative 5 halves, and we know this y value up here is 34, okay? So, negative 5 halves for my x, 34 for my y. Now, what was the next thing they wanted? So, there's my vertex. Uh, determine min or max. We all said it was a max. So it's a max value of, well, the highest y value here is 34, right? That's what my vertex says. So we're going to have a maximum of 34. The range. Now, y'all, when you, when, you, when you do range, range always, you know how my x's for my domain always start left and go right? Well, for the range, you want to start with the bottom value and go up. So ranges need to go up. You need to figure out your smallest value for the range and then go up to your maximum value. Well, let me ask you all this. This graph goes forever down. So what do we say we're headed off to if this graph is headed downward? Well, remember, these y values get negative as they go down, right? Negative. I'm getting more negative. I'm getting more negative. So my range is going to start at negative infinity. It's starting down here. I don't know where, but I know it's headed towards negative infinity at that end. Now, those y values are going up, up, until I get to that y value right there which was my maximum point. Well, y'all, we know what that Y value was. That maximum Y value we said was 34. So you're going to have a 34. Now here's the difference. Since 34 is included in the range, you got to put a bracket around it. So on the range, the number will always have a bracket, okay? So on the range, the number always has a bracket. And that's because, remember, brackets mean it includes it. Brackets would be like the solid line versus the dotted line stuff, okay? So then they said, hey, increasing and decreasing. So my increase in interval. Now remember, I used the y value for the range, okay? I'm going to use the x values for the intervals of increasing and decreasing. Well, y'all, this left side goes uphill, right? But remember, that graph goes down like this forever. Now I'm looking at the x's. Out here to the left, where do the x's start at? 
Okay, because this graph, you can keep going left on the x-axis. This graph will keep going down it. So these x values we're saying come in from negative infinity. So I'm coming in from negative infinity. My graph is going uphill until I hit this x value right here. Well, the vertex point, that's going to be the point where it changes. So that x value is the negative 5 halves. Now, intervals always use parentheses because that point can't be both increasing and decreasing. So we use parentheses, okay? Now, you'll notice on these parabolas, if one's coming in from negative infinity going to that point, it's going to decrease on this side. But remember, I want the x value where it started decreasing, and I want to see where it ends. Well, it's going to start decreasing where that one ended up increasing. So it's going to start at that negative 5 halves on the x. And y'all look at this. It's decreasing decreasing as my x's head towards what? Infinity. Infinity. There you go. So notice, these graphs, one will have a negative infinity on it. One's going to have a positive infinity when you're talking about a parabola, okay? Um, So... The range was my Y values, and I go bottom up, increasing. I'm reading those going left to right. Left to right, where's it increasing? Left to right, where was it decreasing, okay? So y'all have fun, because now we got a word problem doing this. Now, I'm going to read the gist of this and write down the actual formula on it. Um, so this one says, a toy rocket is shot vertically into the air from a launching pad three feet above the ground with an initial velocity of 64 feet per second. It says the height H in feet of the rocket above the ground at T seconds after launch is given by the function. Now I'm going to write this function. They're giving me H of T equals negative 16 T squared plus 64T plus three. So H of T finds the height. The height is what this formula finds. And the variable that determines that height, T is the variable for time. Okay? So they're giving you this formula, and what they want to know is how long will it take the rocket to reach maximum height. Well, y'all, that maximum height is going to be whatever we find using H of T, okay? That's like the Y value. Then they want to know, uh, whoops, my bad. How long it'll take it, that's my X value, my bad. Getting y'all messed up here. Remember, because time is the variable here. So X value will be the time. And then they say, uh, what is the maximum height? Well, y'all, the maximum height is going to be equal to the, not the X, it's going to be equal to the Y value. Okay, remember, min or max stuff is the Y values. Um, 
since t is the t variable here, when I solve for the uh, x coordinate, that's going to give me the time it took it. <clears throat> so what they got is a parameter doing this. This rocket takes off as time gets bigger going that way. That rocket's going to reach a maximum, and then that thing's going to come back down to the ground. So the height right here is your Y values. The time is your T or your X values, okay? So time and then height. And it makes sense what goes up. Got to come down and gravity pulls it down. That negative 16 is because of the gravity. Um, the 64 was because they said it was going 64 feet per second. And then the three was the height of the launching pad. Okay. So all that's a bunch of gibberish. All we want is that vertex point. Okay. We want to know what this point is. So we're going to get the X value first. And remember the X value was negative B over 2A. So that's negative B is 64 divided by 2 times negative 16. Now remember, when you're done, you're finding time, so that's got to be positive. Time can't be negative, okay? So the top's going to stay negative 64. The bottom, 2 times negative 16 is negative 32. So see, my negatives are canceling, and 64 divided by 32 gives me 2. So that means this little T value right here was two seconds. So it took my rocket two seconds to reach this maximum height. So to get my maximum height, I'm going to get the Y value now. So put in, and remember the Y value is finding H of two. So let's put our two in, negative 16 times two squared plus 64 times 2 plus 3. All right, y'all. 2 squared is 4, so that's going to give me negative 16 times 4 plus my 64 times 2 plus 3. So now I'm going to do all this multiplying. All right, let's see. Negative 60, 16 times 4 is a negative 64. 64 times 2 is a positive 128 plus 3. So, yeah, I can add this and see how high my little rocket went. So, negative 64 and 128 is 64. And 64 plus 3 is 67. So, how long did it take my rocket to reach maximum height? That's going to be 2 seconds. What is the maximum height, which was my Y value? That's going to be 67 feet. Now, you don't have to put the feet in the seconds. All you got to do is put the two in the box and then the 67. And y'all check this out. If you get decimals on this answer, it will take decimal answers, okay? This one don't give you a restriction. And usually when you're dealing with what we call a real world type problem, they're going to let you use decimals, okay? So, y'all, that was 7.5. So, now I just wanted to show you a little bit about the support. All righty. So, this will be. Um, Support for 7.5. And y'all, there's only three problems, and they deal with the increasing, decreasing, and constant. Now, I done told you increasing went uphill left to right. And remember, I'm only concerned with the X values only.
So left to right, uphill. Decreasing, we said, was downhill left to right. And once again, I'm only concerned with X values. And then we got a new one in this section called constant. Well, constant goes straight across. It is a horizontal line. left to right but y'all guess what i'm still only concerned with the x values where that happens only concerned with those x values okay so i'm going to use some uh graphs here and I'm going to zoom this in right here and try to focus that in as I zoom it so y'all y'all can see this graph right here right so what we're going to do it wants to know the function is increasing on what interval? Well, look here. This part right here is going uphill. That's the only part going uphill. So what I need to know at this point where it starts going uphill, what is that X value right there? Well, one, two, three. At the X value of three, it starts going uphill. So I know it's starting at a three. And look here, what's it headed towards as we go to the right? This graph keeps going uphill as my X's head towards? Infinity. Infinity. Now remember, increasing and decreasing always have parentheses. Well, y'all look at that. There we go. Three infinity. Be careful not to pick C, remember, because this point can't be increasing and constant so we got to use parentheses all right constants next constants is is this part going straight across so we need to figure out right here what x value does it start being constant and then what x value did it stop being constant well y'all right here if you go up, that's negative one, two, that's negative three where it started. So it started at negative three, and as you go down to X, as this thing is constant, you get right here at this X value. And y'all, that is what? One, two, three. So check this out. You had a three in this one and a three in this one. Three was the point where it went from being constant to the point where it started going uphill. So how about decreasing, y'all? That's this left side here. Would y'all pick A, B, C, or D? And I'll tell you what, you can eliminate A and D because they're using brackets. We never use brackets on these, so you either got a B or C on that one. What y'all think? You're coming in from the left. Although the arrow's pointing up, this graph is going downhill left to right, okay? So you're coming in from the left on the X's, and you're cruising. You're going downhill, downhill, until you get right there. So you're starting from... Way out here to the left. Neg yeah, negative infinity. And then you're cruising until you get to this point right here, which is on the X's is guess what? Negative one, negative two, negative three. Y'all look how these intervals are connected. Um, 
decreasing from negative infinity to negative three. At negative three, I start being constant until I hit positive three on the x's. Once I hit positive three, I quit being constant and I start being increasing. All these will connect almost like a puzzle and it'll describe that graph, okay? So y'all, let's see what y'all about to do on this one. Whoop, trying to get my focus real quick. Now notice when this one's got one, two, three, four lines on it. Um, but I'm looking at the increase and this, this one's increasing. And it looks like this last one is increasing. That part right there is decreasing and this little bitty one's constant. So let's start with this one. I'm looking at that X value right there where it starts. So y'all, that looks like negative one, two, three, four, five. Looks like negative six on the X. And it's increasing until I get to this point. So I need to go down. And that is negative one, negative two on the X's. So y'all, you got another part going uphill. So at that point, I'm betting that's going to be seven, eight, because this one didn't have another part. And none of the others have that negative six, negative two we got. So let's see. Right here, this point, if you go to the X, is definitely at seven. And then it quits one, one over at eight. So two parts going uphill, you got to have two intervals. So y'all, that one would be A right there. So then it says, where is it decreasing? Now, they're going to make us put the numbers on decreasing, which was this part right here. So I'm going to go down and see what this X value is. Well, y'all, that starts at 1, 2. Starting at 2. And it's decreasing until I get to this point. Well, I know what that point is. That was the point where this one started. Well, that's going to be 7 right there. So from two to seven on my X's, that thing's decreasing. So look at constant. Constant's this little bitty piece right here. So I'm gonna go down and see where that starts. So let's see, negative 10, negative nine, negative eight. So that starts at negative seven. And y'all, it stops one point over at negative six. Okay, so that's the trick on these is to figure out what you're looking at, increasing to decreasing, and then coming down to the X phase. Because I don't care that this one had a value of six or seven. I don't care that this one's nine. What I care about are where are you increasing on those X's, okay? So y'all look at this one. Whoops, let me pull my camera back up. This is the last one, and it's a little tricky. So I'm going to zoom that in just a little more. So first, they want increasing. Well, y'all, this little piece is increasing right here, and this little piece is increasing right there. So this one, remember, these X's, this graph goes forever. So it's increasing coming in from negative infinity. So you would have to put negative infinity. And then it stops increasing at the vertex right here. Well, if I go straight down, that vertex is happening at negative seven. Um, then you would have to put a comma and the next interval. So the next interval it's increasing is right here. So let me go up and see that's putting me at, uh, looks like negative two on the X's. And it's increasing to this point right here, which you come down is at negative one. So it only increased for one total X value right there, okay? From negative two to my negative one. 
So decreasing is, oh, and I've only got one, uh, one place decreasing is right here. So it starts decreasing at that X value we said was negative seven. And it's going downhill till I get to this point right here. And y'all know if I go to the X's, that's that negative five. And then that's the only point where I'm going downhill. Constant. Well, I got this point and this point. So let's get the first one. Starts being constant at that negative five. And it starts right here. And that's at that point where that one started going up. So that's at negative two. Then I got a comma, y'all, because I got this one right here. So this one starts being constant right here at negative one. And y'all, look at that. It's constant. As I head out right, as far as I can go, toward positive infinity. Now, since this one's a solid line, check it out. Negative infinity to negative 7. Negative 7 to negative 5. Negative 5 to negative 2. Negative 2 to negative 1, going up again. And then from negative 1 to infinity, that thing is constant so these are not bad if you remember every answer is an x value only okay i didn't care about this one going up to a two this one coming down to a negative two we don't care about that we just want the intervals where it was doing that stuff at okay all righty y'all so Questions on that? Yes, sir. I have a question. Uh huh. Um, could you go over again how you got the decreasing and increasing on the second problem? On my second one. Um, There's the one with multiple, multiple lines. Right here. Yes, sir. So remember, increasing is uphill, left to right. So the, I had this place right here going uphill left and right. Yes, sir. So I wanted to look at these X values. So that's where I came in and got that X value right there was negative two. Okay. And then where it ended was right here. And I came down and got that negative two for that one. So okay. negative six, it started negative two, it ended. But look right here, this very nice piece is also going uphill. All right. So it started going uphill. I went to the X value there, and that was seven. Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, okay, here's where it ended. So I came down and got that X value, which was eight. Okay. So since there's two parts sort of going uphill left to right, you had to have two answers here. So decreasing is going downhill left to right. And the only part going downhill is this little third line right here. Okay. So... Start right here. Where did it start? Going downhill. Well, that came down to what? One, two on my x-axis. It started going downhill. It ended right here. And if you go up to the x-axis, that would be seven. Yes, sir. So okay. This one went downhill. <clears throat> and then at seven, this one started going uphill. All right. Okay, I don't understand that better. Huh? I, oh, there's another one? Well, the constant one was this one right here. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So it started going straight across at this first X value, negative 7. Yes, sir. And then it stopped going straight across at that X value, which was negative 6. Okay. So if you'll remember, I'll tell you what, on these, I totally ignore that Y axis. Yes, sir. I'm only acting like there's one line here, and that's that x-axis, okay? Okay. So that's your only line for you, so put <laughs> that one and be done with them. Okay. Thank you. All righty, no problem. Now, we're not going to get a lot of those in the future, um, but they like doing those with them parabolas. Um, so that's why we did that support to get you good at uh, – 
Now, remember, on the parabolas, you're only going to have an increase and a decrease, and parabolas don't have that little straight part, okay? Yes, sir. All righty, y'all. So, um, now we'll say there is a section in, uh, I think, 6.8 where we do some more of that increasing and decreasing and constant. Um, but that'll be next week when we do the 6.8 section. 6.1, we'll deal with uh, like domains of square root stuff, like radicals and stuff. So not too bad. This week you had a lot more formulas than you're getting next week. That's for sure. Are we going to have to graph any of the um, uphill, downhill? No, they're just going to give you a graph, and you're just going to pick those intervals out of it. Um, the only thing you're